In the 1930s, German biologist Hans Krebs, the son of a Jewish physician, was forced to flee Nazi Germany. By 1937, he was doing research at the University of Cambridge in England, determined to unravel the mystery behind an essential biological process. How do the cells in our bodies convert food into energy? It's our next great discovery. To investigate the process, Hans Krebs broke open a group of cells by grinding a sample of animal tissue. He collected the liquid from the broken cells, then put the contents through a series of chemical reactions and measured the results. Slowly, a pattern began to emerge, a pattern that led to a remarkable discovery. From his measurements, Krebs determined that sugar molecules from digested food go through a cycle of various chemical reactions inside the cell. This cycle results in the production of the energy-rich molecule ATP. This molecule provides us with the energy we need to make us go. And the cycle of chemical reactions is known as the Krebs cycle. It was a milestone discovery in the development of biochemistry. The Krebs cycle opened the door to a deeper understanding of how cells function in the human body. Just like our next great discovery. In the mid 19th century, scientists using powerful new microscopes found something never seen before a mysterious structure lurking inside nearly all types of cells. It was equipped with two membranes and had the ability to change shape. Over the next hundred years, several biologists combined to uncover the secrets of this biological wonder. They called these structures mitochondria. Among the scientists involved in the first wave of discoveries about mitochondria was Britton Chance. His contributions included the invention of a dual wavelength spectrophotometer, a device that provided scientists with a clearer picture of how mitochondria function. Today, he's a professor of biophysics at the University of Pennsylvania. I made a gadget. This gadget would look through the turbidity of these organelles because they had membranes and they had cell walls and they had things which scattered light and you hold them up to the light all you could see was a fuzz. Well we made an instrument which uh, got rid of the fuzz and found two components that linked the mitochondria to Hans Krebs citric acid cycle. So this sort of tied the whole thing up and uh, made links between enzyme action and the whole energy chain. So it sort of glued it together. With the help of Chance's invention, scientists found that the mitochondrion provides the energy that enables a cell to work and the body to function. The mitochondrion has to be a very efficient way of using the food stuff that the host cell gathers. And this is called a phenomenon of respiratory control. To the layman, it means that he can exercise like hell when he wants to, and all he has to do is stop to recoup. In other words, he doesn't have to take a pill, he doesn't have to take an injection. Uh, his body will, his mitochondria will reconstitute the energy deficit. Having done that, they'll go to sleep. So I think it, especially in these days of Olympic uh, sports where everybody's pushing their ATP to the very limit, it has a uh, real significance. Britain Chance appreciates that significance as a scientist and as an athlete. In 1952, he won a gold medal as a member of the U.S. Olympic sailing team. 
I think discovering the components, studying mitochondria in vivo, finding out how they work, showing how important respiratory control was and how it worked, and of course, studying free radical generation, uh, which now is recognized as not so dangerous, but a signaling process. And uh, that work sort of keeps me off the street now, but I'm working more on brain and cancer because of the implications of mitochondriality there.